Hey everybody, welcome to an investigator guide for Arkham the Horror card game. Uh, this guide is designed for beginners or uh, new players to the game who are wondering, what the heck do I do with all these cards? Or alternatively, why is the ghoul priest still killing me? There's nothing I can do. Well, worry not. We're here to help you find something to do by making... Uh, this, is all, this is all Travis. Travis did the heavy lifting here. I'm, I'm just... You know, he made the deck. He is the advice for how to make Roland win for you. We're going to be doing investigator guides for the majority, uh, all of the investigators. And, eventually. Uh, they're all going to, yeah, eventually, yeah, like don't hold your breath uh, for them to come out anytime soon. They'll come out at a steady pace, though. Um, but our hope with these is that you find some, you, you win more when you play with them. Uh, in addition, they, there's a specific format to them where we're not just like, saying build a deck with all the cards uh this starting deck is only with the core set and then uh we have um advice for building with each cycle of cards so we're going to talk about the dunwich legacy exclusively path carcosa exclusively and so forth when we move uh move forward and make an investigator decks for investigators from specific cycles those investigator guides will only have cards from that cycle um, of course, there's always more you can do with the whole thing, but this is just to give you a slice of the game for when you're just starting out. Uh, likewise, if you are like us and you consider yourself to be an Arkham, the, a horror of the card game pro, uh, let us know in the comments below further advice for new players who might be coming to this page to find more information. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Travis because this was his deck, and he'll kind of lead the conversation as we go through the slides, starting with what we have here. So, Travis, what was your goal with this Roland Banks deck? Um, well, Roland Banks is he's a very offensive investigator, having blue and yellow cards. So you shoot monsters, and you get clues for it. And then when you don't have monsters to shoot, you try and get clues other ways. Um, pretty simple stuff. Um, you only have so many options in the core set itself. You end up playing a lot of cards. You're going to see a lot of cards that end up being the same throughout most of these decks because the good ones in the core set are just good mm -hmm. uh, on that note uh, this is built with two core sets if you don't have two core sets uh if you can afford another one buy one or proxy the cards you don't have that's a recommendation that comes with this yeah that's a big big upgrade that like you should do yes yeah <laughs> uh so yeah just like looking at the basic cards here like we got uh, we got our big pile of weapons Two forty fives, two machetes, and then Roland's signature thirty eight. Because you, if you're not killing monsters, you're not really doing what you're supposed to as Roland, especially with his triggered ability that gets you a clue after you kill a monster. Um, like for allies, we've got Beat Cop and uh, Guard Dog, who also help with that. Uh, Dr. Milan will help you pick up the clues alongside with the magnifying glass and the flashlight from the first slide. Mm -hmm. um, He's very good at that. Yep. Yeah. Events are just, like, pretty well... They do more of the same. You know, dodge will help keep you alive. Evidence working on hunch will get you more clues. Emergency cash pays for expensive things. Dynamite and, uh, blast blows yeah. the hell out of things that you don't want to test for. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, sometimes, sometimes there's, like, three or four guys all in the same space. This one can be particularly good in uh, if you're just starting out in the whatever the first one's called. What's the first scenario of the game called? The Gathering. Thank you, because all I had in my head was the parlor, and I'm like, that's not right. <laughs> um, but like when the ghouls will amass in one location, the dynamite blast is a good way to just you know blow them up with dynamite. Your house is getting burned down anyway, so why not do it? Uh, moving forward, you got some skills, pretty straightforward stuff as well. Yeah, again, Vicious Blow is just more damage, reduction is more clues. Yep. Um, guts and, like, Unexpected Courage are there just because they're they're flexible. Uh, you're going to see Guts come up quite a bit, actually, in these decks, as a lot of the ways that the encounter deck attacks you is through brain tests, and Guts is good at pushing through that. Yeah. Uh, this list also features, like, a one of manual dexterity just because... Roland's only got two foot, and occasionally you might need that little bit of a boost to get away from an nasty treachery card or something like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so then, uh, one thing I also want to do with these guides that wasn't in your deck tech that you wrote for Arkham DB, 
which mm -hmm. you can find in the description below if you want to read Travis's uh, description there as well. Uh, but I also want to talk about like the unique assets and weaknesses that come with each uh, investigator. If you're just starting out, how you can try to beat these or use them to your advantage. So with Roland's 38 special, uh, it just uh, attacks and deals more damage. Uh, it attacks better if there's clues on your location. It's pretty straightforward. Um, but cover-up can be a little bit uh, scary the first time you see it in... Uh, it's because it is scary. It is, yeah. It's really scary for Roland. If you're not playing a campaign, don't even worry about it. Just pick it up yeah. and be like, nah, nothing to worry about. Um, when you're playing, Travis, what do you, how do you feel? Uh, this also goes to you, Bryn. How much should you prioritize the objective versus your cover-up? Well, if I build a Roland deck, I don't worry about cover-up because I'm not playing this set of unique things. Because <laughs> cover-up sucks. <laughs> but um, it depends where you are in the campaign, right? Like, if you're in the first couple scenarios, like, yeah, maybe you should look into cover getting that cover-up done because playing the rest of the scenarios only four or three sanity is going to be awful. Mm -hmm. But, like, if you're in the last, probably, like, the back three-ish, I wouldn't worry about it at all. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty much going to be my answer as well. Like, if you're if you're late into the game, it doesn't matter if you start the next scenario with three, with, with you know four or three. If uh, there's only one scenario left to go. Mm -hmm. And then on that, when we get to these upgrades, which are some of the upgrades you can follow in the core set, uh, there are some ways to combat this, which Travis has going here. So Travis, I'll pass these to you. These are some of the upgrade options to take in the core set. Here's a few suggestions, and why um, they may be good. Yeah, the big one here, like, with being relevant to uh, the cover-up is Elder Sign Amulet. You know, Soak 4 brain damage is huge for Roland. And, like, I mean, so all the other upgrades help you do things good, but you can't do th things if you're dead. It's true. And Elder Sign prevents that, so. Uh, other cards here, like, Police Badge pushes his mediocre brain to being good helps you cruise through a lot of those uh, difficult treacheries while also giving you just a nice little burst of actions should you need it. Mm -hmm. um, the police badge, one thing it... You should probably shouldn't buy a police badge and a Lursine Ambulant as they both take up the accessory slot. Yes. Yeah. But like, you know, if your campaign's going good and you're feeling good about stuff, maybe get the police badge. If it's not going good and you got lots of brain trauma, maybe look at the Ambulant. Yeah. 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 Even, even if you end up with both of them and you're not able to play one without discarding the mm -hmm. other, if Police Badge is in play first, that's kind of not a problem. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if Elder Sign Amulet is in play first, then the Police Badge is just an extra copy of Guts. Yep. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a good point, too. Uh, B, uh, B Cop's just better. Just, you know, deals more damage. He thinks twice before he dies. Yeah. Yeah, it's Sometimes worth noting that his functionality kind of changes here, where he's no longer really damage soak. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's much more of an offensive card than he was before you upgraded it. He's all, he is still brain soak, which is kind of nice, but yeah, it is it is the important one here. <laughs> uh, and then if you want to uh, get a nice big gun to shoot people with, there's shotgun. Yeah, this one's on here. Like especially as you get more cards, you're gonna find shotgun outclassed by a lot of stuff. But shotgun's still really cool, and Roland's the only horse and Vesker who can play it. So it's it's on the list. It's it feels really good when it works well. You just get to blow the crap out of something. Yeah. You know, he didn't, he didn't kill the yeah. ghoul priest in that first scenario, and you, he won again in the second one. This will probably do it. It'll probably make him real dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then these are some seeker upgrades that are in the core set. <laughs> yeah. The disc of Idzama is like just a really solid yellow upgrade. Um, Again, like, I probably wouldn't upgrade it over the other two accessory cards, but it's, like, an okay option, uh, especially if you already you have someone else who's trending, like, if you're playing with a Mystic on your team who's got the uh, trending towards monster combat with shriveling and stuff like that, and you need to look more at clues, and you don't have the Quasimay resources to devote to dealing with enemies, this is a good free way to get rid of them. And uh, Magnifying Glass Level 1 is... You can see that one a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's just... It's, it, it's, it's just a, very it, good. Yeah, it's a fine one to upgrade when you have, like, a floating experience, and you're like, yeah, let's just do this. Yeah, no, it's just a solid upgrade. Like, a lot of the times I will... 
I mean, this list is only playing one magnifying glass, but I used to start with two magnifying glasses in my decks a lot, and then at the first opportunity, I would uh, get rid of them both for level one magnifying glass as well as another upgrade card. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, here are some uh, events and skills uh, in the Dunwich Legacy. So these are some level zero cards. Uh, they're not upgraded. I had a little brain fart. But these are some, uh, so say you have the Dunwich Legacy cycle, here are some level zero cards that you can add to your deck, potentially taking out some of the options you have here. Uh, with that said, Travis and Bryn, because you guys can both see my screen, what are some cards that if you had to make some changes to the list you currently have to add these cards into it? Um... You could shave on the weapons for prepared for the worst, of course. Because that's basically what they are. I would shave on the 45s, probably. Um, yeah, like once you find the machete, the 45s kind of don't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. Unless you're playing Dunwich. Unless you're playing Dunwich and you're like engaged by a thousand guys or maybe something that could fly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it is also worth saying that uh, if you're new, you probably don't know what the um, taboo list is. Uh, but this list is built without taboos because new players, you just don't don't start with them. Yeah, yeah, don't don't worry about it until you start winning all the time. Exactly. Yeah, we're, yeah. I'm not. I didn't talk about that at all in the list besides telling people to ignore it. So yeah, yeah, it's the same thing here. Uh, Inquiring Mind is a pretty uh, also good card with Roland because you're probably going to be wanting to fight enemies on locations with clues, and this is three wilds on a location that you're probably standing on. So that's pretty good. Yeah. As a general rule is rolling, you want to try and end your turn on a place with clues anyway, so that way if a monster spawns on you, you're already there, you don't have to carry it there. Mm -hmm. um, this cycle benefits that kind of behavior a lot because of Inquiring Mind, which ends up very strong in the Mythos phase, in that uh, for that reason you could probably cut like the dexterity or shave on some of the unexpected courages or guts for it. Yep, yep. Uh, sure it also supports that if you have a... Uh, if you have a monster that spawns like somewhere else, you or if a monster it. spawns on you and you're not on a clue location, you can actually use the shortcut to like carry the monster over there. Yeah, he's like, hey, follow me. Come through the sewers and we'll come out over here and then I'll kill you. And he's like, okay. Uh, over here we have some of the upgraded cards from the Dunwich Legacy. Yeah, you get some really, really good upgrade cards from the Dunwich Legacy. Uh, Brother Xavier plays into like sort of the defender archetype where you can take damage for your teammates as well as uh, buffing up your brain. Yeah, he does. Yeah, and then also like even for you as Roland, right? Three extra uh, sanity damages, nothing to, you know, it's great. It's good. Yeah, and he like deals two damage to an enemy when he dies. Wow, this guy is like, <laughs> I remember why we used to play him so much. Yeah, he's great. He's a good guy. Uh, Pathfinder is probably one of the best yellow cards in the game. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. being able to move for free every turn is very, very good. Very strong. Um, also so good for Roland, because uh, you're going to want to move to a location with an enemy in clues, and this will help you do it. Yeah, it helps you get around and save actions to fight things that are there. Um, in that same vein, or similar vein, Vicious Blow lets you kill things better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not particularly exciting, but like... It's good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've had worse is a good way to not die. Right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, again, talking about Roland's garbage sanity score, this helps make that feel better. Also, it gives you a ton of resources, usually. Not a ton, but like some resources. Yep. And that's very helpful. You'll notice a lot of the blue and yellow cards are very expensive money-wise. Mm -hmm. uh, then we also have Lightning Gun and uh, Charisma that also came out in Dumbage Legacy. Yep, I mentioned... Uh, when we talk with shotgun, that it'll get outclassed depending on what other things you happen to own. And lightning gun is one of the ones that does it for only one experience more. It's just a lot more consistent source of damage. Very strong monster killer, or and boss killer. Yeah. Uh, three damage is good enough to one shot most enemies. Yeah. And uh, the charisma is just like a staple from Dunwich Legacy. Mm -hmm. You know it. Uh, Allies are good, and it gives you more. Yeah, you'll notice that there's lots of good allies. I mean, an ally is probably the best card type. Yeah. The strongest card type. So. All right, let's hop on over to the Path to Carcosa. Here's some level zero cards that fall into this uh, cycle. Yeah, let me handle this. Uh, and on the hunt, both fill a similar role for Roland in that you can 
Um, it ensures that you get enemies to fight when you want them. Let me handle this. It takes them from your teammates, and you can fight them. And on the hunt, not only finds you enemies to fight, but it also helps you dodge the scary brain and foot test that the deck has for you. Yeah. Uh, Fieldwork is field work's really nice when you're just trying to run around popping enemies or getting clues. Like, you, just, you move into a location, and then next enemy you shoot or next time you investigate, you get plus two. That's pretty handy. Yeah, it's pretty handy. Yeah. And the Kong and Favors is here, like, as... This is its neat little own sort of ally-centric archetype for Roland, where you try to abuse... It's, it's not the one that we have uh, listed up top there, but you try to abuse, like, uh, not research, art student, and uh, things like upgrade beat cop, and use it to use their abilities, get free clues, get free damage, and then turn them into a different ally and still be able to play them again later. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's kind of more to that specific build. Um, yeah. But just something yeah. that if you have this cycle, you may not be aware opens up those possibilities for you. Yeah. Um, so then he also has access, uh, so the, the, the Say Your Prayers cycle, because his sanity is so low, um, it's there's a high potential to get these going. Uh, you probably don't want all eight <laughs> in your deck, um, but like you could slot them in in some places, and I agree with what Travis said, just because of his uh, low sanity, it's very easy to get these things going. All right. Yeah, in a lot of cases they're just like better... I mean, I'm bet not inherently better. They're barracks unexpected courages in a lot of cases. Yeah. And they're like different guts and manual dexterity, so. Yeah. Uh, and then here are some upgraded cards from the Path to Carcosa cycle. Uh, upgraded shortcut is nice. The third one there just helps out your teammates. And again, helps you shuffle around the monsters when you need it to. Um, Upgrade shortcuts like a little bit more flexible for Roland because if one of your teammates has a monster on them, they can use it to move over to your location if there's like a clue there but not where they were. Mm -hmm. um, Ever Vigilant and Stick to Plan kind of fill a, a similar niche where they're both very, very good. But also, they just let you do things very efficiently. Yeah. Um, yeah. They let you set up and make sure that you've got your cards that you need ready to go when you need them, help you find weapons, help you find. Your clue gang stuff help you find your allies, help you find a protective amulet or whatever if you need that, and help you get them into play. Uh, and then the last one here, Forewarned, is a card that is like uniquely very good with Roland. Yeah. There's yeah. a couple of investors it's solid with, and it's just in general like a good card, but like it's very good with Roland because if you draw a scary um, treachery, you can just ignore it with the Forewarned, put one of your clues down. And boom, all of a sudden you've turned on your cards that care about a clue being on your location, or if you kill a monster, then you get to get the clue again for free. And... Yeah, so it's just very, it's it's not too much of a hindrance. Like, it's not a hindrance for the majority of the Seeker characters, because they're so easy to pick up. But with Roland, yeah. he has so many ways to just consistently get that one clue back that it's worth not taking two sanity damage over most of the times, yeah. if not all. All right, we're on to the Forgotten Age. These are the level zero cards that you can find here. Yeah, there's like not so much for this cycle. Yeah. Um, Venture's kind of cute with some of the other stuff. It's an okay option, though it's probably not better than B Cop or Dr. Milan. Might be better than the Guard Dog, but mm -hmm. it just helps you. Uh, it's more for like big gun centric builds. And yeah. like... like if you're buying that lightning gun, Venture will probably come in handy. Mm -hmm. It also gives you extra uses on your flashlight. Mm hmm. Yes, that is very relevant, too, if you're leaning more towards a uh, clue gang build. Thank you, Bryn. Um, Flashlight is also a card that you're going to see come up in a lot, like a ton of these videos, because that card is a lot better than our group gives a credit for. It's just Yeah, yeah I, th I think it's because we play three people, so like usually the clue getter is just so good that we're like, ah, I don't need to grab a flashlight. But in two players, or even like especially solo, flashlight's really strong. Yeah, it's just it's also just like not cool, right? Yeah, it's just a flashlight. Yeah, so like, yeah. I need I need two more cards for my deck. I'll throw a pair of flashlights. Like, no, you're gonna go find some random janky card from your color. Yeah, exactly. Uh, scene of the crime is a way to get clues. Uh, you get more clues if there's an enemy or location. Uh, yeah, it's basically like it's a nice way to steal clues. Uh, it's free. Yeah. 
Um, um, it's also neat, like if there's a monster you don't think you can blow up, or if you just need the clues now, or if you just want to get three clues in one turn, that seems pretty good. Yeah, and take the initiative fills a similar uh, niche as unexpected courage, maledictity, and guts, and the inquiring mind that we talked about earlier, as well as some of the desperate skills, where it's very very strong in the uh, at protecting you from scary treacheries during the mythos phase. Yes, because it's just three wild. No one's taking. No one can take any actions yet. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's just three wild every time during the mythos phase. Very strong. Very strong. I think uh, Take the Initiative is the only one of those three that I would definitely include in my role in deck, like, every time. Yeah, I agree with that. So. Uh, some upgraded cards. Quick study. Uh, well, this goes back to the placing clues on your location. Very easy for Roland to pick those individual clues up, uh, especially if he needs that extra mm -hmm. bump. If it's part of the to increase his fist for fighting a monster, then it's just like, yeah, I'll just make sure yeah, I get plus three to this test, yeah. It's easy. Yeah. Uh, the Well Prepared is one of my favorite build rounds, actually. You're going to see that come up a lot of the blue decks as well. Uh, it's really neat just as a way to get extra symbols for free off your weapons and your allies and whatever. Um, it's just a just a good card. Free, yeah, it also free feels stuff. fun to play. I'm, just, I'm, to play. I'm with Travis. It's fun to play. And then we got Flamethrower, which... Again, there's another weapon that severely outclasses the... I mean, Flamethrower actually outclasses, like, almost every weapon, but... <laughs> uh, it's pretty sick. You just... You roast everything. And then also, if you look at Well Prepared and Flamethrower together, my god, plus three to fist attacks? My god, um, plus seven? <clears throat> yeah, you can just fight the tough enemy and, to show off. Yep. Uh, next, we're up on Circle Undone. These are all the level zero cards that are open to rolling that Travis thought were good. And there's more. There's actually a lot in this cycle. Yeah, this cycle has actually, like, really good cards. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hollowed Mirror is a... And it's... I mean, it's really the bonded cards that are good. Again, this one competes with that, for that accessory slot a little bit. But uh, this one's also level zero. So, you know, the, you can try it out before you decide whether you want the other ones. Um, but the cards just do, like, everything you want as an investigator that you're not normally good at. It heals you, it draws you cards, gives you resources. Like, it's really good. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Cult Lexicon is, um, kind of similar, but for yellow. It does a lot of things you're not normally allowed to do. Um, it does draw you cards and filter through your deck, or the bonded cards do, uh, which is something yellow does. But also does, like, free damage. Which is really good. Yeah, always good. Um, anytime you can do damage or get clues without making a test. Feels nice. Nice, yeah. Um, Steadfast is like a pretty strong upgrade to Guts, I think. Um, for yeah. most of the game, I think. Uh, as opposed to, until maybe you get into like the later scenarios and you might have a trauma or two. This is just like plus three fist, plus three brain. Yeah. That's strong and, you know, yeah, it's just it's good. And then Enchanted uh, Blade but... is a yeah, sick ass magic sword. It is a sword. Yeah, the upgraded dead? version, which we do have coming up, is even no, more I'm not dead. Do you want to talk about the Enchanted Blade? Do you like that card a lot? Sure, I could. Uh, I think like the most important thing about this is that it's not entirely clear about it, but if you fight and spend the charge, you do get plus two fist to the attack. And on a level zero weapon, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. That is a lot for level zero. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty strong. Let's see what we have yeah, coming up. Like... Uh, crack the case. Another economy card. Your cards are expensive. This helps you get them. Get the money for them. This one also is like cute with things like some cards from previous cycles, like uh, Forewarned and mm -hmm. uh, Forewarned and Quick Stay, where you can like drop a clue on a location with really high shroud to kill a monster there, and then get a, a ton of money because yeah. it's got like seven shroud or whatever, and you're just like, Haha. yeah, you'll feel very powerful when that happens. You'll be like, my God, <laughs> I've yeah. done it. Hawkeye folding camera is a okay option instead of like magnifying glass or like maybe flashlight, where 
you have to work a little bit to get it set up, but like when you do, it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, plus, brain is good. Plus, book is like fine. Plus, Missani is good. Only that real downsize takes up a hand slot. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you won't be able to get uh, all those big guns. Yeah. <clears throat> Alice Luxley is like a cute alternative to some of the other allies. She gives you plus one book, so like if you're playing a more investigative Roland, Alice is pretty good, I think, as opposed to a monster fighty one. Because mm-hmm. you can use your book to get the clues and then you get the clues and you get to shoot stuff and maybe defeat an enemy with the damage. And then if you do that, if you defeat the enemy, maybe you get another clue and you get to ding some. I guess you only get to ding something once a turn, but there's cute things you can do with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Mr. Rook is... Just a good, very good card. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Rook's actually, like, not super good with Rome because you kind of never want to see cover-up. <laughs> like, good point, good point, yeah. Mr. Rook's like, I know what you, I know what you did, and you're like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like actually bad um but miss brooks took a really good card and i still probably strongly consider playing him anyway mm-hmm. he find he just digs up whatever you need yeah you know? he digs yeah. up a weapon if you need it digs up a way to get more clues digs up a way to protect yourself yeah just whatever all right here's some upgraded cards from the circle undone cycle uh, these first two tarot cards, these are super boring. Yeah, but they're they're good. They're awesome. they're Just good. <laughs> stat increase. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah, like plus one book, plus one fist is just nice. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes you do the thing that you're doing better. Heck yeah. Again, like if you're leaning, if you're playing a more yellow investigating role, and I wouldn't get the ace of swords i get the death card and if you're actually if you're playing like proper shooty roland then i would definitely get the ace of swords over the death card so yep yep definitely uh what i maintained is a card that i've gained a lot of respect for recently um it's really good with guns and uh other upgrades as well which like you should infer from reading it but it seems like <laughs> i'm a waste of a card but like it actually generates a lot of value yeah oh yeah and then we have the fabled enchanted blade which is like for its experience cost gotta be one of the best blue weapons oh yeah yeah what, yeah what doesn't it do yeah i don't know like it's a it's reasonably costed mm-hmm. it only takes up one hand slot it takes up the arcane slot like who cares i was gonna say it doesn't get mm-hmm. clues but with roland it does it does yeah it defeats the game in two ways. But yeah, like you kill things better and you kill things easier and it heals your brain, which is once again, that's like Roland's biggest struggle. Yeah. Yeah, the only the only downside to this is that it draws you closer to your cover up. Yeah, that's but you know, we can't really call that a downside because you're gonna have to draw cards from your deck anyway. Drawing cards is good even if there's weaknesses in there. I don't know, Justin, like, cover-up is bad enough that, like, if I'm playing a rolling deck, I would go out of my way to kind of avoid drawing cards in most circumstances, just in the but, hopes but that... that but, I mean, Enchanted Blade does that in and of itself, right? Like, it only... It's only... It only draws a card when it empowers an enemy. When it's empowered and defeats an enemy, right? So... Yeah. It's, it's like, you have to, like, really go digging for that to even be a downside with Enchanted Blade. Yeah, like, the, the one or two cards you get off this in a game isn't good. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. More so, it's less that don't oh. spend three actions drawing cards. Uh, that would be bad. But drawing a card off Enchanted Blade <laughs> isn't a bad thing. Do yeah. we have more? We do have more. Look at this. Oh, here's yeah, some this fun stuff. Sweet. I love the cards for the cycle. Uh, this is a much more affordable I've had worse. It does the same thing as the um, Downwitch Legacy one. But I think this one's actually a bit better just because it's easier to get the full value out of it for the experience you paid. Yep. It's not very often that you're taking like four heart or four brain damage in a turn so no it's really cool when that works out but yeah it feels really good when you just like hey hey." (laughs) you're much more likely to need to stop too yeah yeah when that big uh slimy guy from the god age comes in and he like chunks you for three hearts and three brains you're like six resources (laughs) but uh yeah it doesn't happen very often no Uh, agency backups just a lot of dudes on a card like it's fun we still this is as, like 
This is the wrestler role in the squad. Yeah, this is what Travis always says. I don't know if this card's good because he hasn't played it, but it's <laughs> it does so much. Yeah, no, this is just like Roland, but an ally. Yeah. It costs you a bunch of money to play to get set up. And then you have like... Sadly enough, you have a comparable amount of brain stat. <laughs> and then you sit there and you just you shoot monsters and you pick up clues. Yep. You... And then the MK1 then grenades? My... Yeah, this card's like dynamite blast, but like kind of way better. Yeah. Like, it's not testless, but it does give you plus two fists on the attack, so it's pretty hard to screw that up if you're actually trying to do it. It doesn't take up any slots for some reason. Like, I understand why, but at the same time, it's kind of like, why? <laughs> yeah, if they're, if they're well-maintained, it just means that you put more grenades in your pockets or whatever. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so so that's kind of very well-maintained. Well yeah. Your police officers roam around with, like, six grenades in his pockets. It makes you feel safe, I'm sure. Your FBI officers. Just, just it in makes case, me right? feel safe. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's it. Yeah, we're back at the beginning. Yeah, so, didn't, uh, I'm not covering any of uh, the... The dream, uh, uh, dream meters? Yeah. Cycle for any of these. I'll go back and edit stuff in at the bottom of all the guides once that cycle concludes, if it ever concludes. <laughs> With the state everything's in right now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. yeah, and these aren't uh, these aren't these guys aren't meant to be like sit down and play exactly this list and make exactly these changes. You'll also try to avoid saying to take out certain things for other things mm -hmm. in the guides. It's more of a more of a roadmap sort of. Yeah, it's kind of pointing you to cards you should look at and see if they work for what you want to do. I think the the biggest piece of advice for Arkham Horror the card game and even like most of these Arkham games like Elder Horror is you have to answer the question what do you want to do. And very rarely can you do everything. Like, only green and red can do that, but they don't do it well, right? Um, but purple like, can do everything and well. Yeah, that's the thing about purple. But they cheat. <laughs> they, they cheat. They, they, they make up their own rules. Yeah, um, it just sucks sometimes. So when you're building this deck, it's exactly that. Travis is offering a roadmap for you guys to potentially win more, which is what you want to do. Or lose less, rather. Lose less. That, that's the better way to put it in these games. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for watching. We'll have another investigator guide coming at you very soon. But in the meantime, have a good one. And as always, GG's.